In this tutorial, we will see async await and how to use it in JavaScript asynchronous code. We have already seen callbacks and promises, but async await adds a new layer of simplicity to the code. Let's see the details. Async await is a new way to write synchronous code 2017. It's an alternative for callbacks and promises. It makes the syntax very, very simple, exactly like synchronous code. You cannot use it with plain callbacks. Async await is like promises, non-blocking. Async await is built on top of promises. Async await synchronous code will look exactly like any synchronous code, but it will work asynchronously. And this is where all its power lies. So how to do it or how to make a function asynchronous? You just need to add the async keyword to the function. Later, you will see that you also need to use the await when you call any asynchronous operation that returns a promise. This function is non-asynchronous. This one is asynchronous, simply because you added the word async before it. Of course, in JavaScript, you have so many ways to write the same function. In this is another way. You still can use it as a promise if you want. You can say hello dot then value console dot log value. So this one will return hello. Very simple. No promise here. Nothing. No callback. You just add the word async before the function name. We will not use asynchronous code like promises. We will use the word await, as we will see in the next example. This function is not a promise, is not a sync. That's why you cannot use a sync await inside. You'll get syntax error. So let's see an async function. You have seen this function done using callbacks and also done using promises. We are trying to read the student file. This time, no need to add any callback, no need for uh, to wrap it in a promise, no need for reject or resolve. That's it. The only thing you need is add the word await before it. The word await now tells that when the promise fulfills, return the result value. That's it. No syntax, complexities, no nested callbacks, no callback hell, no promises and callbacks. You just add the word await. Of course, in order to be able to use the word, the word await in any function, the function itself must be what? Asynchronous. So now this function will open the file, but because this file read fs returns a promise, as you know, you just call it using await. Of course, fs read file of fs extra returns a promise. So now data will be called when this function reads the file and finishes the file read. Data is converted, then you return your data. No callback, no resolve, no reject. So this function returns a single student from this file. So how to call a function? That's it. Provide a function like async function f let result equals await. Why do you need to use await here? Because the function you are calling is asynchronous. Await gets student. Now when the function gets student is fulfilled, since it's a promise, data will be sent here and await will be used. That's it. Only the word await will make it asynchronous. Let's see another example. As you see here, we are using FS extra and FS read file in FS extra returns a promise. I am reading 
the file here. I'm using await because this is a promise, no need for callback or a promise. Async, the function must be asynchronous. Read the data, return your data. Here I'm calling it from the main function, which is also asynchronous. When I call the get student function, I need to use the word await. Since you don't see any error catch with async await like callback errors or rejection promises, you just enclose your code in a try catch block. So if there is any error, it will be caught here. Then you just call your main function from anywhere in your code. Once you call main, main is going to call get student, and as you see, all these functions are asynchronous. So by just added the, adding the word asynchronous and using await before calling any re function that returns a promise, we are doing asynchronous code in JavaScript. No need for promises, no need for callbacks. You still, however, need to understand promises because you are working with promises here. But the syntax is oversimplified. Another example using a sync await. We are reading two files here. First file is get student, you have seen it. And now we need to get the program name. You have also seen this code using callbacks and promises. See, each function is only three lines. The code in callbacks used to be at least 10 to 12 lines with so many blocks and nested blocks. Here you only have three lines. Await before file read, return the data. Await before file read, return the data. Make sure the function name is before the function you use the word async. When you call any of these functions, whether get student or get program name, you just need to make sure you are adding the word await. Await get student. When it's fulfilled, it send that student. Await get program name. When it's fulfilled, it returns the program name. That's it. The code looks exactly like any synchronous code you have written in C++ or Java, but luckily it works asynchronously, which is perfect for any web development course or project. Make sure your code is enclosed between try-catch block. Another example, here we are reading more than two files, we are reading three files. The difference here is the get student function is calling the get course names. It will also call the get program name. We are not calling them from our main function. With callbacks, this became very, very complicated. With promises, it remained complicated since there were many callbacks when you read the files. Now, you just do it the same way. You call the get student. Your get student, of course, you need to use await before you call it since it's asynchronous. Now, your get student will read the file. Of course, before reading the file, you need the word await. Get your, that individual student. Now get student was, is going to call the other functions the same way you did it in the main before. Await get course names. That's it. So get course name will be called. It will return the names of the courses and student dot course names will be set. Then get program name is also going to be called using async await. It will return the program name. So it's just a simple return. Make sure just the function is asynchronous and whenever you do any file read or any function that returns a promise, make sure you need to use the word await. With async await, you are still working with promises, but your syntax is very, very simple. Example four. In example four, we are trying to open the staff file and we are trying to see how many students are enrolled in each, uh, in all the courses the staff teaches. Our first function, get staff, it will return the staff, 
all the staff members in JSON format. So we just say staff await get staff. That's it. Return the file, convert it to JSON, return it. Then we call another function, which is asynchronous. We need to know how many students are in the courses of the staff. We can know this from uh, the course numbers and the course IDs and the instructor ID. So we're going to make a reduce function here. We are using reduce and our accumulator is zero. So staff course count, here we know how many courses, not how many students, how many courses are being taught by the staff. It's a simple comparison. We check the course ID of the course file with the instructor ID of the staff file, and we increment it if it's the same one. A nice thing here, we delete the staff password. Password is a property of the staff object. We can delete any property even before you returning it. Then the set course count will return the staffs after setting their course count to the value uh, calculated by the map reduce function here. Let's see this code in action. This is our code. We have the get staff function. It is called from our main function using await. The staff file is read, converted to JSON, and all staff members are returned here. Then we call another function, set course count. We send the staffs to the second function. We read the course file and we match the staff ID with the instructor ID of the course file. Using MapReduce, we set the course count of each staff. If I run this code, I get the output, which is how many courses are being taught by each staff. Most of them are zero. Maybe at the bottom we have, yeah, here we have course count two, two, zero. So such code written using promises or callbacks will take a lot of time. Let's see another example. In this example, we are trying to read all the courses and we also want to know how many students are enrolled in each course. So to do that, we read the courses file, typical asynchronous git courses function, returns all the courses. Then we send the courses to another function, which is set student count. Almost the same way we did the staff and course count. Here we map the courses, we map it, we map a, a new value, and we use MapReduce to calculate how many students are enrolled. How we do this? Simply by comparing the course IDs of the student object with the course ID or with the course CRN. So if the course CRN is included in the course IDs, then we increment our counter. Here, we are calling the first one. We call then the second one. All the code is run asynchronously. Let's see this code in action. In this code, we read the courses. Then we try to find how many students are enrolled in each course. To do that, we need to read the courses files. Then we need to open the student files and check the courses each student enrolled in and compare them with the course ID or course CRN. We will set the student count property, a new property, to each course. We're going to use MapReduce to set this property. Then we retain courses to the main function. In case you have any problem, the catch uh, will uh, catch the error. Let me make this file name wrong, both file names. I'll make them wrong. Let me run this code. So we get an error that was code here inside our try catch. Let us run the code without any errors. 
See, our main function also needs to be asynchronous. And whenever you call any asynchronous function, make sure you add the word await before them. Let us run the code again. So now we get a list of all the courses with the new property and how many students are enrolled in each course. Async await makes JavaScript or asynchronous JavaScript very simple, straightforward, and it's very useful when you do any asynchronous, whether disk read, network read, web API, or any functions that requires or will take a, a long amount of time.